Hello and welcome to this edition of Reporters. On today's programme, a cruise on board the legendary Jeanne d'Arc, this French Navy helicopter carrier, referred simply by those who know and love her as Jeanne. Built back in the 1960s, the 182-metre-long ship has seen some 6,400 officers walk her plank to climb aboard to learn the ropes and receive their training as Jeanne doubled as a makeshift floating college. Well, now, after some five decades of diligent service, a long-earned rest is next on the horizon for Jeanne. The cruiser is setting sail for her final mission now, a six-month swan song. France 24, Franck Berrier joins Jeanne's crew to hear their memories and accounts of the numerous bon voyage on board the legendary Jeanne d'Arc. Take a look. Fashion week in Brazil. Tight tank tops and miniskirts have descended upon the port of Rio de Janeiro. The backdrop is the Jeanne d'Arc, an old jewel in the French Navy's crown. Sailors stand at attention, representing France abroad is part of their job. Faut décaler. Faut décaler. The Jeanne, as it's affectionately called, serves as a naval school for officers in training. Today, a French designer label is using the foredeck for its photo shoot, with sailors as props. A uh, captain? Almost. Call me commander. This boat is 50 years old. Wow, 50 years old. And is it true it's the last journey for this boat? Yes, it's the last time here in Rio. The Jeanne has reached the end of its life. 50 years training the French naval elite and representing France around the world. Soon, it will be dismantled. The Jeanne is special. Because everyone knows her, I think that some countries, all they know of France is the Jeanne. You know, the Jeanne is a ship, but she is also more than that. She's an ambassador for France. In the middle of the night, in the belly of the beast, four hours before it sets sail. The mechanics are busy firing the engine, and clearly it's no easy task. Oh, come on, last time it was the other way around. The boiler, a creaky old thing, doesn't work every time. It was cutting-edge technology back in the 1960s. A steam turbine, not state-of-the-art anymore, but it will sorely be missed. I'm going to miss her. She's probably one of the last steam ships around, and that's my job. So I'll miss her, a lot. This machine is still human. It's probably the last engine room in the French Navy where there are so many people in one room. There are 25 of us here. Allez, mets des coups dedans. Allez, allez. 5 a.m., the Jeanne d'Arc sets sail before dawn. In the unlit bay of Rio de Janeiro, we pass the Fush, a French aircraft carrier sold to Brazil 10 years ago, now called the Sao Paulo. As the sun rises behind the Corcovado, the Jeanne heads for deep waters, the statue of Christ barely visible through the fog above Copacabana. The next port of call is Buenos Aires, Argentina. From Rio, that means four days and four nights at sea. In the security room, the more experienced in the crew are already nostalgic of the good old days. We were the lucky ones. Why is that? Because these boats went around the world, and 20 or 30 years ago, when we did it, to be on the Jeanne d'Arc, it meant you got to travel the world, go everywhere. Back then, everyone wanted to do this. People really wanted to be on this boat. She was a legend, really. And she still is a legend. It, she will continue to be a legend until we dock in France, until the moment when we enter the port of Brest. This boat, she'll be a legend till the last minute. Drill after drill, the Jeanne trains cadets for a lifetime in the Navy. Today, they practice refueling at sea with the Brazilian tanker. Officers learn to get the job done, whatever it is, and regardless of the language barrier. A hundred students are on board. They'll spend six months on the Jeanne, practicing at sea everything they learned in class. For anyone who wants to be an officer in the Navy, who went to naval school, the Jeanne d'Arc is the pinnacle. Since we were kids, we've been keeping track of her movements, the comings and goings. Being on board the Jeanne now, well, even after a whole month here, we still don't fully realize where we are. Especially for its last time at sea. Yeah, we realized immediately when we were selected how lucky we were to be on the last trip of the Jeanne. 
part of the legend. Participé une dernière fois au 8 heures. A military band rehearses old Jeanne classics. They were brought on board to liven up the ship's final current call. When the Jeanne was built last century, energy efficiency wasn't much of a concern. All day long, the chimney spits out thick, dark clouds. 65,000 liters of gasoline go up in smoke every day. 65,000 liters every day. It's huge if you compare it to a small family boiler, of course. It's enormous. It's like 10 years of heating. But remember that this ship carries 600 people, it weighs 13,000 tons, and it's moving along at a speed of 10 knots. In its glory days, the Jeanne could cruise at 30 knots, 50 kilometers per hour. But the crew doesn't push the old lady too hard anymore, to protect the machines and save fuel. Everyone on board wants to bring her home safe and sound. I think that every sailor who ever stepped on board the Jeanne will be nostalgic, for sure. There's no way around it. You grow attached to your boat, everybody does, even more so with the Jeanne, partly because we do really long assignments on the ship and because there are some unforgettable moments. The Jeanne was built for the Cold War, but the world has changed and sailors have to adapt to new missions. Victor Bravo, we have a foot on the ship. The second one is cooperative. Students are being trained to combat drug trafficking or to fight pirates. Last year, Jeanne took part in operations off the coast of Somalia. Drills have to mirror real-life situations. I have diarrhea, I need to go. A dozen foreign students are also on board. The atmosphere on board is pretty impressive. 100 students. It's unique in Europe and in the rest of the world to have such a big training ship. It's a unique opportunity and this is the last journey, so it's incredible. On Belgian ships, we never go this far. This is a good experience. It's the first time I leave for six months straight and on board a foreign ship too. So that's pretty good. I think it's something I'll never forget. When I hear my elders waxing lyrical about their time on the Jeanne, well, I think that several years from now I'll be like them. I'll be nostalgic about the Jeanne d'Arc. Students spend six months on board. The foredeck doubles as a running track. Push-ups and exercise keep the crew in shape. The Jeanne often needs a good scrub, too. It's an old ship, and appearances must be kept up until the last minute. That's it, there's not much else to do. Apart from one or two laptops on board, the life of a sailor is much the same as it ever was. The Jeanne has only been at sea for a few weeks, but already in the sick ward, the doctor has his work cut out for him. Usually in six months, we have to perform one or two operations under total anesthetic like an appendicitis, and we also have a lot of small fractures. This student was lucky. If his hand hadn't healed, he might not have been able to continue the mission. It would have been a shame to waste a year just because of a fractured hand. A year of classes? Yep, a year of classes. And Miss the Jeanne? Yep. Are you going all the way? No, not all the way. Not really. You see, he's still numb. Next door, the dentist is busy extracting a wisdom tooth. He's learned to deal with the rocking and rolling of the ship. Provided the patient rolls along with us, it's okay. Does the Jeanne sway a lot? A little. But since we're moving with the patient, it's okay. We can manage. The problem comes when we put our utensils down on the table. If the ship sways, then they all just fall on the floor. It's almost lunchtime. Tiger prawns are on the menu. In this kitchen, cooks serve 1,300 meals a day. And that's not counting the bread and croissants they bake for breakfast. Typical French, but that too is coming to an end. In my job, from the point of view of a cook, I think it might be the end of an era. This is the only boat on which a cook has so much leeway. And that's disappearing along with the Jeanne? Yes, I think that will disappear with the Jeanne. The Jeanne was the jewel in the French Navy's crown. Prince Albert of Monaco trained on this boat. Celebrities, kings and presidents walked these decks. Yesterday I mentioned Eva Perron. All the French presidents of the Fifth Republic came on board. All the French prime ministers except Jean-Pierre Raffarin. 
As for foreign heads of state, it goes from Eva Perón to General Perón to Leopold Sédar Senghor, Emperor Bao Dai, the Prince of the Helens Islands. Many leaders came on board. Even Fidel Castro, right? Yes, of course, Fidel Castro too. The wind picks up near the Rio Plata. Jean-Jacques makes sure uniforms are impeccable. Everything must be perfect. The Jeanne sails up the channel leading to Buenos Aires. Guards of honor, cadets, Jean-Jacques decides who goes where, a choreographer of sorts. After 39 years in the Navy, he's reached retirement age. When this assignment ends, so will his career. The Jeanne, I will have spent four and a half years on the Jeanne. Emotional times, because this is our home and we live on board the Jeanne day and night, so the separation will be difficult. You know, it'll be hard to say goodbye to the old lady. This evening, there's a cocktail party on the deck, one of those official functions commonly held on the Jeanne, where guests talk politics, business and diplomatic relations. Soon, the Jeanne d'Arc will be stripped to pieces. There will not be a new Jeanne, it's too expensive. From now on, cadets will train on more modern boats. Better equipped, perhaps, but not quite as charming as this old lady. That's it for this edition of Reporters. An affectionate look over at Jeanne's many years of good service. Her next mission will be her last. In something of a twist of irony for history buffs, Jeanne, as the French heroine she was named after did before her, will end her career in the hands of the British. She's to be dismantled and have any potential hazardous toxins move to a safe place. But her many, many fans are up in arms over the idea of this vessel being plundered for scrap left to rot like scores of ghost ships before her. Well, you can see that programme again on our website, www.phosphaget.com. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.